Hi, this is Shady, and today we're going back to the Octagon with one of the most ferocious and strong uh, MMA fighters in history. I'm sure you've all heard of him beating uh, people like Brock Lesnar and many others, Alistair Overeem. Today we're gonna go through and see how he operates. He has one of the most devastating strikes like knees and just pure ferociousness and obviously this is a lot of it is due to his uh, PED use so today I'm gonna show you that aggression strength will always play a role when I talked about Junori you know strength does play a role sometimes you need to be soft and yielding and sometimes you just have to be you know the, the rock sometimes you're the hammer sometimes you're the nail and today we're gonna show that how much uh, when someone possesses this kind of aggression and strength uh, what they are capable of accomplishing so uh, one of his favorite things is just knees to the face but when it comes to grappling he is pretty much accomplished he has one of the most uh, like aggressive and murderous grappling and the first one is the basics is obviously the armbar the armbar is a staple of all MMA fighters whether it is from the top or the bottom as you see here with the knee on belly setting it up and then finally after a few strikes he gets it so the armbar like I mentioned from the top or the bottom or you can flip and then get it here you see before even it stretched out it was already over so he is incredibly strong, incredibly uh, like determined to get it. The Juji Gatame is one of the staples, one of the oldest techniques of Jujitsu, uh, never found outside of Japan uh, until uh, Judo made its way for the outside world and Jujitsu as well. So it is an incredible uh, technique only found in Japan in ancient times but it's one of the staples for all grappling arts like Sambo, uh, BJJ, Judo so and MMA of course so here you see one of the most efficient and the basics the first one you will learn as a white belt and the last one you will master especially from guard after developing so many defenses for it so the basics will always take you a long way the next one is we see it here is the hadaka jime or the naked choke or rear naked choke uh, also one of the staples of judo and bjj later on and uh, combat sambo since sambo wrestling doesn't have choke so hadaka jime means naked choking uh, no gi required hence it is often used when taking the back uh, after that it is of course the triangle choke but the number one choke in nogi and MMA it's actually the rear naked choke back is king here you see it being done from Ushiro Gatame or the back mount this is the variation that Overeem did so here this is incredibly nasty to look at I'm really sorry but but as you see here this is an Uday Garami just just so you know that PEDs do work in terms of aggression and strength in the octagon so here you see it tangled hands Ude Garami it can be done from multiple positions and multiple ways it can be done reversed Gyaku Ude Garami which is now what we call Kimura but this variation in general terms in BJJ uh, culture it is called the Americana uh, if someone knows why please let me know down below I believe it was learned in America by catch wrestlers I'm not sure so but it always existed in jiu-jitsu I already did a video about this called uh, the judo take from catch wrestling and I discovered and I discussed the evidence pertaining the Uday Karami because uh, big catch wrestling names claim that it came from catch and this is far from the truth uh, evidence from the 19th century showing jujitsukas and judokas doing it so there is no evidence that it came from catch and it didn't exist before so here you see it uh, inversed a kimura what you call it the guillotine is it can be either two things as if it's a neck crank it's actually a, a os osai ishigi 
or if it's a choke attacking the trachea it can be also a form of hadakajime or a naked choke but this is a mai hadakajime or a front uh, choke it is still legal still being done in judo today here you see it from mount uh, obviously it is very efficient uranage rear throwing uh, Alistair Overeem possesses an immense amount of strength. It is one of the techniques of uh, the Nage no Kata, one of the first Katas you will learn in Judo and obviously a staple of Judo till this day, very much used as a Kaishiwaza or a reverse technique, someone attempting an Uchimata, a Haragoshi, a Hanegoshi, uh, even Osotogari, they are countered often with uh, Uranage, uh, particularly the Georgians, are very much uh, known for it. Here you see a belly, belly to belly variation of it. It's what Overeem did, but with a twist in the hips. Uh, Uranage, anything you throw behind you is Uranage. So you don't have to actually lift high. Uh, here, never pull guard. This is what will happen to you. So pulling guard is actually very dangerous other than the context of Jiu Jitsu and Kosen Judo. Here you see, uh, as much as I respect Hanner and Hiron, don't think of survival, think of getting the hell out. Something as simple as the side control can just do incredible damage. This is not factoring his hands. So even if he had his hand uh, like framed on his hip, he can still do so much damage. Yoko Shihogatame, a staple, even like Hickson. Have you seen Hickson? On his back while doing MMA no he preferred top position uh, always so uh, pulling guard uh, or trying to survive uh, anything and other than the context of judo or BJJ is just in my opinion it should not be done the least you can do is recover open guard and kick in the face uh, squaring on the hips uh, or you know just being like trying to limit their strike they will eventually get you do not be static in self-defense this is what i say obviously there's many things around it uh, you can go watch gracie breakdown uh, self-defense they cover uh, from all position like i think they call it survive a frame and then attack something like that so but in terms of just surviving and not tapping out is incredibly dangerous outside of BJJ or judo so even in judo you can just get pinned and the time runs out and then you just lose so uh, this is something as simple as Yoko Shihogatame can do this much damage here I'm actually very surprised and impressed with Alistair Overeem doing something that's incredibly uh, rare in both MMA and judo a Yoko Otoshi or a side drop uh, a Yoko Sutemiwaza or a side sacrificing technique. Uh, I'm actually very impressed someone like him did it. So this is not, some people would say this is Ukiwaza, but no, Ukiwaza, you do the same, you drop the same way, but you actually throw behind you. This is throwing to the side, but obviously this is from the sleeve and lapel. In MMA, you do it from the clinch, the over and under clinch. Here you see it, Uki Otoshi. Uh, it is splendid that he actually uh, did it with all the strength and all the brutality that he showed earlier. Uh, I'm actually very impressed. Yoko Otoshi is a very rarely done technique. Uh, some people say uh, the, the new Kataguruma as a form of Yoko Otoshi, but the fact that they take the ribs and the arm and like put them over the shoulder and then wheel them I would say it's still considered kata guruma in my opinion. Yoko Otoshi, here you see there's nothing on the, the shoulders, and but it's still considered a Yoko Sutemi. You can argue the new kata guruma as a form of Yoko Sutemi, yes, but it is not, in my opinion, Yoko Otoshi. Here you see it, Alistair Overeem doing one of the classics. Uh, I'm actually very impressed, like I said. And the final technique is here you see it uh, Tani Otoshi a valley drop uh, people think that you have to trip them with your leg but that's actually very dangerous it is one of the biggest misconception of uh, Tani Otoshi you have to put your leg uh, down and then you just 
take their weight down as you sacrifice yourself it is not to block with your own leg because you will end up destroying your knee uh, can you block with your leg yes unless you have like a very strong leg or you're blocking with your quad but most likely it's gonna be with your knee and this is where the risk is very high and you just end up destroying your knee it is a uh, sutemiwaza obviously tani otoshi uh, also being done in mma a lot and grappling nogi grappling a lot of people tend to use tani otoshi here you see he does not block with the with the leg does he frame yes he frames with the leg so that uh, he uh like prevents uke from stepping back but he does not block as in uh using it for leverage on the other side like a effort like i explained in my leverage video you have the effort and you have the load so uh this is not you just frame with your leg but you don't use it in order to trip okay well you do trip okay with it but it is actually coming more from the upper body uh so you just have to be really careful like i said one of the biggest misconceptions is people use it to block which becomes very dangerous to the knee so the last one was uh, tanya otoshi valley drop so uh i know alistair overeem is not the same after he got popped so it is incredibly uh, important to know this he, first of all he lost a ton of weight he's a shadow of his former self and uh, just so you know that PEDs work, uh, Junori uh, yielding and you know being flexible, but also strength is always involved. Whatever context, fighting sport and PEDs as well are always involved. So here you see another Tani Otoshi. Uh, so uh, he lost so much aggression, so much strength. Like I said, he's a former. Uh, version of himself so if you have anything else to add let me know down below also consider supporting me on patreon and this project that i'm doing i'm constantly working every single day to put out more content so if you do decide to support me on patreon i am incredibly grateful and i have content that's exclusive for the patrons only so if you have anything else to add let me know down below this was shady and thank you for listening